In this short video lecture, we're going to be solving a heat transfer problem, um, and specifically this is a radiation example problem. The problem states, a thin metal plate of emissivity epsilon 1 passes through a curing oven of emissivity epsilon 2. The inner oven walls can be treated as a single uniform surface as can the plate. The inner oven wall temperature is 600 Kelvin. The plate's surface temperature is 450 Kelvin. Surfaces can be assumed to be gray, diffuse, isothermal, and characterized by uniform radiosity and irradiation. Calculate the total amount of heat that goes into the plate. Okay, so here's our plate. Here's our plate. Here is the oven. So this is all isothermal, as is the plate itself. So we're going to have radiation exchange happening back and forth between these two things. So our first step is going to be to calculate the view factors. Remember this r surface radiation is a surface to surface phenomenon. So we're going to have this surface radiating to this surface. We won't, we're going to assume that if there is air or a gas inside this oven that it is transparent to radiation. So we'll neglect surface to gas radiation. So because it's surface to surface, we need to figure out how much of one surface, like the plate, sees the other surface. So first, if our plate is surface 1, we want to know how much of the plate is being quote-unquote seen by the inner walls of this oven. So as you can see, if you pick any point on the plate and in any direction, this convex plate, all that's going to be going out and ultimately that will be intercepted. Everything leaving this plate will be intercepted by the inner oven walls. So what does that tell us? It tells us that the view factor F12 is equal to 1. That means 100% of any radiation being emitted or reflected off of this plate is going to be intercepted by these inner oven walls. So now we need to figure out the inverse of that. So what percentage of the radiation leaving the surface of the inner oven walls is going to be hit hit the plate. And a common misconception is that that view factor is also 1. But that is incorrect. So because some of this radiation might be leaving from here, it might be leaving from this wall and going up to this wall. Or it might be going from here to here. So only a percentage of that is going to actually hit the plate, but a lot of it's going to be intercepted by itself. So that view factor, F21, does not necessarily equal 1. And in fact, it does not equal 1. Definitely does not, because of what we just discussed. So how do we find F21? So we are going to use what's called the reciprocity relationship, which states that A1 times F12, so the area of surface 1 multiplied by the view factor from 1 to 2, is going to be equal to A2 times F21. So now this is, gets simplified and we can just solve, knowing what F12 is, we can simplify and find what F21 should be and it'll be a ratio of these two areas. So F21 is going to be equal to A1 over A2 multiplied by F12. So now really the only tricky math part is figuring out what these surface areas are. This is a very long oven, so we're going to neglect, um, well, it's, it's very long, so we can just assume a basis. And let's just say that, let's just use a basis of L. L is the, nope, bad choice, because we're already using an L here. Um, let's call this K, I guess. So K is just really, really long. It doesn't even really matter what. Let's just say it's one meter. Um, so now when we quantify these areas, so area 1 is going to be is going to be, we're told that this is a thin metal plate, so we, we're going to neglect this tiny little surface on each end. That's what that thin assumption tells us. So its area is going to be 2 times the width multiplied by this length k. So that is area 1. Then we have area 2 is going to be, um, we're going to get k, the length of this oven, 
multiplied by 2 times L plus 2 times W, W2. And again, this 2 for the area of the plate comes because you have the area of the top surface and the area of the bottom surface. These 2s come because you have two sides of length L and then um, two other sides of width W2. So really the K just cancels out, so that arbitrary decision we made doesn't really matter. Our view factor, remember that was just 1, so um, we end up getting that F21 is equal to 2 times W1 divided by 2L plus 2W2. So plugging in numbers, this is going to be 4, so 2 times 2 divided by, this is 3, so 1.5 times 2 plus 6, so it's 4 ninths, which is 0 0.444, and that would repeat. So really what that tells us is that um, for all the radiation being reflected or emitted from these sidewalls, 44% of that is going to be intercepted by the plate, not 100% of it. Okay, so now we have our view factors. Now what we can do is we can use an equation because this is what's known as a two-surface enclosure. We have one surface being completely enclosed by another surface. So we want to know the rate of radiative heat transfer between the two surfaces. And so what we get is um, this would follow the Stefan-Boltzmann law, which means that our rate of heat transfer, oops, our rate of heat transfer Q is going to be proportional to sigma times T1 to the fourth minus T2 to the fourth. So this sigma times T1 to the fourth is known as the emissive power of surface uh, one. And similarly, sigma times T2 to the fourth is known as the emissive power of surface two. But specifically, because these are not, this would be and I misspoke there, this is actually the black body emissive power. So it, this doesn't yet account for the fact that these are gray surfaces. So what will happen is there, it, this surface will radiate out to this surface, but there are thermal resistances in between. So this is the, the basic proportions, but if we wanted to replace this generic proportional sign with an equal sign, it would be this emissive power driving force divided by the total radiative resistance. So that total radiative resistance accounts for a radiative resistance because this surface of the plate is not a perfect black body. So there's going to be a little bit of um, diminished heat transfer because of that. Same for this inner surface here. There's, there's a surface resistance. And then there's also a resistance with the fact that the view factors and the areas um, play into the total rate of heat transfer. So I'm going to change slides now, but we're going to use this basic form of the equation, and now we're going to plug in what those radiative resistances are. So remember we had Q is equal to the Stefan-Boltzmann constant times T1 to the fourth minus T2 to the fourth. Then this was divided by R total. So what is R total? This is going to be the radiative resistance for surface one, which just basically means that dealing with the fact that surface one is not a perfect black body, we can account for that by using a mathematical thermal resistance. And then we're going to have this R, I'm going to just call this RS2S, which is surface to surface, which accounts for the, um, the, the finite view factors and areas, the fact that it, um, there's not just infinite heat transfer between the two things, it's limited by the area and how much of the two surfaces are quote-unquote seeing each other. Then we also have the fact that surface 2 is also not a black body. So we can quantify these. We won't go into deriving these because this is meant to be just a, a sample problem, but this R surface 1 is 1 minus epsilon 1 divided by epsilon 1 times A1. The surface to surface is 1 over A1 times F12. And then we also have 
1 minus epsilon 2 divided by epsilon 1, epsilon 2, excuse me, times A2. So now these are all resistances in series. So we would add these up, and those would ultimately go in the denominator here. So what we've just partially derived is a heat transfer equation that accounts for these various assumptions that we've made. So gray, diffuse, isothermal, uniform radiosity, and irradiation. Uh, this is also a steady state problem. Um, and it, this problem is also the two surface enclosure, meaning you just have two surfaces to deal with. That simplifies things quite a bit, where you just have one set of thermal resistors in series, and we don't have to do have to deal with multiple resistances in parallel. So in that case of a two surface enclosure, our Q ends up being sigma times T1 to the fourth minus T2 to the fourth divided by one minus epsilon one over epsilon one times A1 plus one over a1 times F12 plus 1 minus epsilon 2 over epsilon 2 times A2. So really the tricky part of this problem would, is uh, calculating the relevant areas and the view factors and then actually this problem is just a generic equation um, for heat transfer so we could actually jump to this final equation and then it's really just plug and chug. So probably finding the view factors is one of the trickier parts of the problem and the relevant surface areas. And I'm actually going to spare you the plug and chugging part, but this is the equation that we get. And this is this is going to give us the total amount, the net amount of heat that would be um, leaving surface one and going to surface two.